Welcome to your first state test on a Chromebook. If you're ready to go, you should be looking at the screen in front of you now. This will give you an opportunity to enter a name. Be sure to capitalize your name correctly. Once you've entered your name into the blank, click Start Test Now. That big blue button will lead to another big blue button, Start Section. Click on that. Are you following along okay? Great! If not, raise your hand and ask for some help. Let's take a look at the first slide. How do we know it's the first slide? Right here, it will state 1 of 39. During the tutorial, I might ask you to move forward to a question or backward to another question. Pay attention to this number. That will help you navigate through the test. What does navigate mean? That means move back and forth. Let's learn how to move back and forth, how to enter answers, and how to use cool tools on the test so you can succeed. First, let's learn about how to answer a simple question with what we might call a text field. A text field is a blank where you'll enter your answer. You can type into the text field, and this question will ask for a number. Let's read the question together, shall we? Kevin makes muffins. It takes 8 minutes to mix the batter. The muffins bake for 17 minutes. The muffins then cool for 5 minutes. What is the total amount of time, in minutes, Kevin spends mixing, baking, and cooling the muffins? Enter your answer in the answer box. If you know your math, you know that this is a basic addition question, and you should add the numbers 8, 17, and 5 together. You might be looking around on the screen for some place where you can do your work. But don't forget that you'll have the opportunity to have a piece of blank paper next to you. You can do your work on the blank paper and then enter your answer onto the screen. If you do your work to add 8, 17, and 5 together, you might get what? 30 is correct. And all you need to do is type 30 into the text field. This question is answered. You'll notice that there is no big blue button to submit your answer or to save your answer. The answer is automatically saved. The testers automatically know that you entered 30. You don't need to do anything else. Your question is answered and answered correctly. Pretty easy, right? Well, how do you get to the next question then? Let's talk about that big word that I mentioned before. Navigation. Navigation means, what was it? Moving back and forth. You can move back and forth with the buttons up here in the top left of the window. Once again, big blue buttons that help you perform actions. You'll see that only the one on the right is blue. If you hover over it, you'll see it reads next. Let's click on that. Now, I see another question, and I see that I'm at question 2 of 39. You'll also notice that the left arrow button is now blue. What does that mean? That means I can go back to the previous question. Yes, with navigation you can move forward to a question and back to a previous question. You might be asking, do you have to answer that question before moving forward? Actually, no. If you had a test in front of you on paper, you would be allowed to move page to page. Just as that, you can move page to page on a Chromebook test. So, if you use the arrow button to move forward to the next question, you can always go back to the previous question. Don't forget that this does not mean you can skip answering any questions. You may simply want to go back to review a question that you didn't answer, or one that you weren't sure about. We'll be using these navigation buttons to move to the previous question and to the next question, back and forth. So, try that right now. Try to move back and forth, from question to question. It's pretty easy, right? 
Okay, if you've got the hang of it, let's move ahead to question five. I click until I see five of 39 in this gray bar right here. Are you there? Excellent. Now your Chromebook screen may look a little bit different from mine, but you might notice on my Chromebook screen I can't see the entire question. The question spills over into the bottom area and I'll need to scroll down to see it. This is the time when you should practice scrolling. Scrolling is moving up and down in a window, like this. I'm doing it pretty easily, aren't I? Well, there are a few ways to scroll, and many of you will scroll by moving the trackpad or the mouse to this scroll bar, clicking it, and moving it down or up. And you can do that. If you feel comfortable scrolling in that way, go ahead. But I've got an easier way. Have you ever used the trackpad to scroll up and down with two fingers? It's pretty easy. All you need to do is hover the mouse, and that means the pointer, over this area and scroll up and down with two fingers on the trackpad. Place two fingers on the trackpad and move them up and down. And you'll see that the window scrolls up and down. This is a lot easier than having to go over here to the scroll bar all the time. Not sure how to do it? Well then watch this. That's easy, right? Of course it is. Wait, what are you saying? You're using a mouse? Well that's fantastic. If your mouse has a scroll wheel like many mice do, then you can scroll with the mouse. I love scrolling with the mouse, and that's easy also. Look at your mouse. Does it have a scroll wheel on it? Then you can move up and down by moving the scroll wheel. That's what I'm doing right now. I do the same thing. I make sure that this pointer is hovering over the window that I want to scroll, and I move the wheel up and down, back and forth. Take a look at this to see how. Pretty easy, right? You think you've got it? Excellent. Let's answer this question. Anna starts eating lunch at 12.15 p.m. She finishes eating lunch 40 minutes later. Which clock shows the time that Anna finishes eating lunch? Select the correct answer. This looks like a pretty standard multiple choice question, right? It is, and it should be easy to answer by selecting A, B, C, or D. Look at the question. 12.15, she finishes eating lunch 40 minutes later. I must add, 12.15 plus 40 minutes is, what is it? You guessed it, 12.55 p.m. Which of these is 12.55 p.m.? Do you know the correct answer? Well, hold on just a moment. Let me show you something pretty cool. In a multiple choice question, your teacher has probably taught you to cross out incorrect answers. That makes your life easier in answering multiple choice questions. But you can't do that on a computer, right? Wrong. This test will allow you to cross out incorrect answers. Let's scroll to the top toolbar. You'll see a few buttons up here, and you'll notice that the pointer button is clicked. When the pointer button is clicked, you'll see the arrow floating around the screen. I use the arrow, the pointer, to navigate back and forth and to enter answers and perform other actions. But now I want to look at the answer eliminator. Click that button 
and then scroll down. What if I know that D is incorrect? The minute hand is pointing at the 12, and I know that when the minute hand points at the 12, that whatever time it is will read 00, zero at the end. That minute hand is on the hour, so it can't be 1255. Look at that. When the answer eliminator is turned on, I have just crossed out the incorrect answer. I know it's wrong, so I've crossed it out. Look at C. I know when the minute hand is at the 9, that means 45. But my answer is 1255, not 1245. I can cross that out as well. And then I'm left with A and B. When I see only two answers, I know it must be B. That minute hand is up at the 11, and the 11 is the 55 position. So I want to answer B, but the answer eliminator keeps putting an X on it. How do I answer? I scroll back up and click on the pointer. The pointer will allow me to click in the circle and answer the question. Now the question is answered. Practice this. See how you can do this as well. Are you ready to move on? Excellent. Then let's move back to question two. Do you remember how to do that? We move back to question two by using the buttons up here in the top left to go to a previous question. Here is question two. I'll scroll down so I can read it more easily. Which two statements can be represented by the expression four times eight? Two statements? That's right. The question is asking for two answers. And look, instead of four options on the multiple choice, you have five. Do you need to actually click two answers? Yes, you do. Let's notice something else that's a little bit different. Here, you'll see that instead of a circle next to A, I see a square. That's important. The square means that this is what's called a multiple select question. That means that you answer more than one of A, B, C, D, or E. You must pick two. Always, when you read a question like this, the number that you must select will be bolded. So that'll help you know. Also, these squares will help you know that you must answer more than one. Let's read it again. Which two statements can be represented by the expression 4 times 8? Hmm. A teacher puts eight chairs at each of four tables. Maybe. I'm not quite sure. Tom buys four red markers and eight black markers. No, that's simple addition. I know that's wrong. So what can I do? You're right. You can cross it out with the answer eliminator. That one's wrong. Reading C, Marie shares her eight marbles equally among four friends. Hmm, I'm not sure about that one either. D, there are four rows of flowers. There are eight flowers in each row. I know that's a multiplication problem, so D is one of my correct answers. I can turn off the answer eliminator, turn back on the pointer, and click D. I've gotten one of my answers. Let's read E. There are eight ducks in the pond. Then, four more ducks join them. Hmm. No, that's addition again. So I will cross that out. I know that D is a correct answer, and I'm left with A and C. What do you think? Is the answer A, or is the answer C? You might even pause the tutorial right now to discuss the answer with your class. Do you have the answer? Yes. C is a division problem. So, clicking on the pointer, I can enter A. A and D are the correct answer. And you've just answered a multiple select question. Remember, in a multiple select question, you must answer two options. Are you ready to move on? 
Excellent. Let's go forward to question seven. Scroll down to look at the question. Wow, question seven looks quite different. I don't see any multiple choice or multiple select options. Drag and drop the three quadrilaterals into the box. Three answers. Drag and drop. Well, I know what a quadrilateral is. That means it has four sides, like a square. I can click and drag into my answer blank. Well, I know a triangle is not correct, so I'm not going to use that. This is a hexagon. Here's a rectangle. Excellent. It looks like I don't have enough space for another answer. Well, look at this parallelogram. Will it fit? You bet it will. I've answered the question simply by dragging the three quadrilaterals into the box. I've left out my triangle, my hexagon, and my pentagon. And I've placed in the blank my square, my rectangle, and my parallelogram. I've answered the question by dragging and dropping. Sometimes students need to master this skill, but I'm sure you can do it in no time. Why don't you try with your mouse or your trackpad clicking on a shape and trying to drag it into the answer blank. Are you ready to move on? Clicking and dragging is pretty easy, isn't it? So let's move to question eight. That's the next question. This is called a hot spot item. That's a pretty cool name, isn't it? Look, a number line with a whole bunch of blue squares. Let's read the question. Plot the point that shows five sixths on the number line. Oh, okay. So how's the number line divided? It looks like between 0 and 1, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 steps. That means that the number line is divided into sixths. So I just click on 5 sixths, right? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Click, and you can see that that blue square becomes highlighted. It's even bluer than the rest. I've just answered the question and correctly, of course. The hot spot is an item where you can see a blue shape, field, or something similar that I click on to answer my question. Just like question one, this question is answered. I don't need to save it or click submit. I'm ready to move on. Pretty easy, isn't it? Well, let's move on to another item. 17. We're moving forward quite a bit, so click the next button until you reach number 17. We're moving through quite a lot of interesting items, aren't we? You'll have time to play with those later. But look at 17 and scroll down. I see a big circle divided into half. Let's read the question. Use the more or fewer buttons as many times as needed to divide the circle into six equal parts. Then shade one-sixth of the area of the circle. Divide the figure into the correct number of equal parts by using the more and fewer buttons. Then shade by selecting the part or parts. Hmm. Here are my more and fewer buttons, and I also see something that's reset, but I can't click on that right now. Let's click more. I've gone from halves to thirds. Click more again. I've gone from thirds to fourths. Each time I click on more, the circle divides into more sections. And it progresses one step at a time. So one half goes to one third, goes to one fourth, goes to one fifth, goes to one sixth. What if I accidentally move to one seventh and I count my sections? one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and know that I need fewer. Then I click on fewer. What if I want to start over from the beginning? I click reset, and that brings it down to halves. But I will go to sixths. 
Now the question is not answered. Be careful. The question is not answered until you shade the, the part that you want to shade to answer. It's asking me to shade one-sixth of the area of the circle, and I can do that simply by clicking in one of the blanks. Now I've answered the question completely, and it's correct. The fraction model is pretty easy to use, but I want you to try it. Make sure that you are using the more and fewer buttons. Try the reset button. See how well that works. Are you ready to move on? Wonderful. Then let's try, before we move on past 17, another tool that you might have seen up here in the toolbar. This is the quarter inch ruler. I can click on the quarter inch ruler and a ruler appears. That's pretty cool, right? What if the question asked me to measure a line segment? I can click and move this ruler around the screen as I'd like. Let's scroll down. What if I wanted to use this ruler to measure a line segment in this circle? Well, it's easy enough to do it here, right, for the diameter line, but what if I needed to measure one of these angled lines? Well, you can angle the ruler by clicking on one of the circles and moving it. Then I can move it over the line segment that I want to measure. I can angle to make it perfect, and then I can measure. Notice that the ruler is a little bit clear. That's to make it easy to see the line segment. So if I measure this line segment with the ruler, I can see that it is about two and a quarter inches long. If I needed to measure a line, I can do it, and I don't need an actual ruler up next to the screen. In fact, don't even try that. It won't work very well. Instead, use the quarter inch ruler. What if I'm finished with it and I'm ready to answer my answer? Just like the answer eliminator, go back to the pointer and that will turn the ruler off. Why don't you experiment with it? Why don't you try to measure a line segment and then try to measure another line segment? Maybe you could measure a short line segment and then a longer line segment. Practice with the ruler, moving it around and angling it so you can measure properly. Are you ready to move on? Wonderful. Then let's go to question 24. Scroll down a little bit. Question 24 looks a little bit different. It has a part A and a part B. Hmm, that's interesting. If you see a part A and a part B, those questions relate to each other, but you should still read one at a time. Let's start with part A. Read the section above. A library has 126 books about trees. Part A. The library has 48 fewer books about rivers than about trees. That sounds like a subtraction problem to me. And on your blank piece of paper, you might write 126 minus 48. Now, select from the drop down menus to correctly complete the statement. The number of books the library has about rivers is. Did you work that subtraction? Do you want a moment? Think about it. 126 minus 48. But I don't just type the answer in, I choose the correct answer. Did you answer 78? Then that's correct. And I've answered from the drop down menu. Let's continue reading. And the total number of books the library has about trees and rivers is. Total number of books. That sounds like addition. What do I add? 48 plus 126? No. I add the number of books about rivers, 78, plus the number of books about trees, 126. 126 plus 78. 
Do you want to try it? Give it a shot. Once you've added the, the two together, you should have 204. And that's here in the drop down menu. These are called inline choice questions. That's a strange word, right? But it's pretty easy when you see the choose. That means you don't type an answer. You'll pull down on this arrow to choose from three options. And notice that you're making a statement. You're making your own sentence. Let's look to part B. Two students borrow books about trees. Each student borrows eight books. How many books about trees remain in the library? Hmm. Two students borrowed books, and each one borrowed eight books. How many books total did they borrow? Eight plus eight is sixteen, or eight times two is sixteen as well. So they borrowed sixteen books about trees. So the problem is 126 minus 16. What's the answer to that? The answer is 110. And just like question one, I enter my answer into the box, the text field. And now I'm finished. I've answered a two-part question with inline choice and typing in the box. Pretty easy, right? Remember that this test does have some pretty cool computer tools that you'll use on a Chromebook, but it's still about math. Remember your math skills and you'll be just fine. Let's talk about one more tool for the digital test. What if I wasn't sure about my answer to this, but I wanted to move on and come back? How would I know that I wanted to revisit question 24 later on? Well, here in the toolbar, you'll see flag question for review. I can flag it for review, and that way I know I want to look at this one again. You'll see the button is pressed, the flag button, and I guess I could move back to 23 and then forward to 24 and I see that that's flagged. But there's an even easier way to do it. Click the review button. When you click the review button, you'll see a complete list of all the questions. It will list which ones you've answered, which ones you have not answered, and which ones you have flagged. This is an easy way to make sure that you have answered all the questions and that you have addressed all the flagged questions that you wanted to revisit. This is a powerful screen. Not only can you look at that, but you can look at only the not answered questions or only the flagged questions. Try this for a moment. Move through the review screen. Click on flagged, not answered, and all. You might note that you see view buttons and return to question buttons. You've probably already guessed what that does. Return to question will take me back to the question I was looking at when I went to the review screen. View will take me right to the question that I want to look at. Let's say I want to look at question 6. I click View. This will take me right back to question 6. And I can answer that question. Let's go back to the review screen. Practice this for a moment. Try to access questions by using View buttons and then go back to the review screen. Practice this so you can master moving around the test more easily. Are you ready to move on? We're just about finished. Let's click on end section on the review screen. When I click End Section, I read this happy note. Congratulations, you have finished the last section in this test. But I also read this. The last section has 32 unanswered questions. I have not answered 32 of the 39 questions. What can I do? 
Well, there are two things you can do. Review section questions and your answers. Or you can exit the test. You don't want to do that. You've not qu answered 32 questions. Click Review Answers, and this will take you back to the review screen. In that way, you can go back to a question you haven't answered and make sure to answer it. Remember that you should not submit final answers until you have reviewed all of your questions and made sure that you've answered them all. If you ever become confused, feel free to ask questions of the teacher in the room with you during the test. They may not be able to answer all of your questions, but it doesn't hurt to ask to make sure that you are completing the test as you should complete it. Wow, we've done a lot in this tutorial. And that's not a problem because you are a 21st century student. You're comfortable with computers and Chromebooks. You should be just fine to take your grade 3 math test. Good luck. We know you can do it.